Hey, this is Richard Kennerly Cichlids. Today's video, we're going to look at how to breed African cichlid peacocks. Now, a lot of you have already done this, but you might want to check out what I do and compare it to your own notes and see if you can improve or change the way you do things. Or you might want to share how you do things you think are better than what I do. Either way, if you're just a beginner and just want to know how to breed African cichlid peacocks, check out this video. So stay tuned. This is my Orange Crisp breeding tank. Orange Crisp is the male African cichlid peacock that you see here. That's the name I have for him. You have 11 females in this aquarium. No other males besides Orange Crisp. Now you notice that that variant is different from these. That is because I'm trying to get a mix between these and those and the results can be spectacular. Now to stay on track, the first thing you need to do if you don't know how to determine between a male and a female is the anal fin. The anal fin on the male is pointed and the bottom, the anal fin is the bottom fin back here in the back and it's pointed. When you see the females, when their fin is completely extended, it's curved in the back. I want you to notice that throughout the video. Also, the males are the stunners. The females are usually ugly. Now, this is just one variant of the African cichlid peacocks. Some of them can have colors in the females, but they're usually not as colorful as the males. Now once you figure out what a male is and what a female is, you want to pick out the best looking male you can get. You may already have him. The best one. Now my idea is to have 11 females in the aquarium so that this male has plenty of females to chase around and breed with. If he has fewer, he will actually bother the ones that are holding, which is not the same as pregnant, but holding babies or eggs that's underneath the jaw area. If you can look, there's about six or seven in here that are holding all at the same time. And only one male did that. Only one male did that. So when you have 11 females, it allows you to have where there's distractions for this male so he will not stress the females. Also, caves are very important. Now, you see that there's a female hiding in this cave, and sometimes they'll go in this cave. A lot of times, this male will hang out in this cave and leave the females alone, which is good. Now, this is a 30-gallon tall aquarium. I've been breeding African cichlid peacocks for about seven years now. You can breed them in a smaller aquarium. But I like to have either a 29, a regular 29 gallon aquarium or a 30 gallon for the smallest. I like to use lots of females. This allows you, if you're, you have your tank ready to have babies added to it, you can get a lot at once. You don't really want to separate the size and age of the babies when you put it into the grow out tank. Because the bigger size will keep the smaller size from going as fast. And later on in the development, it actually stress and kill off the smaller ones if there's a big difference. Now if you notice here, I have sand as a substrate. That's very important. If you have not bred these before, sand is the best way to go. They drop the eggs. The females drop the eggs pick them up in their mouth and the male fertilizes the eggs inside their mouth. And when they drop them, they, you know, it's good to have them on sand because if you have gravel, they can go into the cracks. 
So on the sand that this is their natural substrate, they're able to pick them up and the male is able to fertilize them. So that is very important. Now when you pick out your male, pick out the best one. Because the females are going to be hard to tell what the genetics are going to be like. And they may all be gray. And there's some, there's some features you could tell on these that are different than the other females in here. But for the most part, it's hard to see what the males are going to turn out to be looking at the females. So the most important fish to pick out is your male. Now the exciting part about breeding the African sick of peacocks, even though these may not be the same here and there, what you have come from these mix of fish can be totally different from what you'd expect. There could be seven, eight different varieties come from these two. Even though there's only two types of fish here, two different types of peacocks, there could be seven, eight, maybe more varieties come from the babies. That's where it gets exciting. That's where it keeps you wanting to breed more and more. People pay high dollar for interesting, really beautiful peacocks, and you can breed them yourself. Now, people, you know, I mentioned culling. Uh, luckily, out of all the years of breeding the peacocks, I rarely get one to have to, to cull. And the ones I cull are usually where the top dorsal fin is only formed halfway back and there's a gap and then the back part forms. And that only happens maybe one every three to four hundred. So if you're worrying about you're going to have to cull some fish, you normally do not have to do that. When you feed an aquarium set up like this with 11 females and one male, you need to pay special attention. And the reason being is there's like six or seven of these they're holding. They're not going to eat for 21 days. And depending on, at least from the time they are holding until they release them. So the amount of food you put in here can vary from day to day. So if you have an idea of what to put into the aquarium, let it sink down from the eat, can change from day to day depending on how many of these are actually holding fry or eggs. So that's important. You have to notice that from day to day. So remember that when you're feeding your breeding aquarium, some of these are not going to be eating and it can affect how much food builds up in your aquarium. So watch them closely. Now you notice that there's no other fish in here besides peacocks. Now you could have the occasional pleco uh, in here with them. But in this one I don't. It's a species only. Uh, some cichlids mix together. Or some African cichlids can mix together. So I don't want anything to mix with these right here. I want to know what I'm getting from this male to these females. I want to know some genetics. And if you want to know a little bit about science, you could you know, find out from yourself in genetics by doing a breeding program. Now the temperature, which I have a heater up there, uh, can vary from 77 to 82 degrees. You can have it lower. You don't really want to have it too much higher because it can be, you know, hard on the fish. But the temperature is not as important as you may think. But 77 to 82 uh, is good. A few degrees difference in there is not going to make a big difference. The warmer the temperature, the healthier the fish will be. There's less problems with parasites in the warmer waters of the aquarium. Also, the fry that are in the holding in the mouth of the females will develop quicker in the warmer waters. So that can be a little bit important, but it's not the biggest thing when breeding the African cichlid peacocks. Now, water changes. Now, some people say do it this way, do it that way. I've changed my ways from, from over the years, and I used to only do 20% water changes and once a week and then now I've gotten to do larger water changes that way if I for some reason a few days later or a week later uh, something comes up and prevent me from doing a water change I'm not 
a bad situation. Water change is important. Uh, you should do uh, water change once or twice, uh, at least once every two weeks, maybe once every week, depending on how much you take out. The bigger water change is going to get more of the nitrates out, more of the tinted water, the yellow. After a while, the water will turn yellow. So, water changes are important. Now, what to feed your African sickle peacocks? Uh, pellet food is the best. Sinking pellet food is the, what I could consider the best food to feed these. The brand can vary. Try out the kinds that you have at the store and see which ones you like. Don't spend a lot at first because you, you may think this is a great brand and great reviews. And find out your fish doesn't like it. So try them out. Another thing that a lot of people don't mention is that the bigger and older the female is, the more fry you're going to actually have. She'll be able to hold more fry in the mouth and your production will go up. And the babies are also bigger and more developed. If you start breeding a small female, a lot of the fry, a lot of the eggs will not be fertile for the first few times. So don't let that alarm you. Eventually that will work itself out where they are fertile. As far as how do you get the babies, or how do you get the eggs, uh, if you're just going to strip them when they're still eggs, sometimes when you have this many females, you don't know which one has eggs and which one has babies. Sometimes you can see through the skin and see the actual babies underneath the skin. Sometimes you cannot. Well, stripping them allows you to raise all the babies you can. And you put them in a tumbler. And the tumbler that I recommend is a cobalt tumbler. I've used my homemade tumblers before. Different ones you, you buy. But the cobalt tumbler seems to work the best. So check that out. So remember, the larger the females, the more old, older they are. And it can take up to three years for you get a... a full-size female so if you can buy a full-size female that may be better than that to raise one from a small size up to a breeding size so the size of the female is important now the male should at least be as big as the female uh, it's better if he's actually bigger um, if he's older he has more ability to fertilize more females eggs at a time uh, so that is important. As far as where you raise your fry, you should have your fry in the biggest tank possible. They'll grow faster. Because on these peacocks, they do not color up within a few days. It could take a month, two, three, four, five months just to get the full coloration of a peacock. So the best way to do that is having the biggest aquarium possible. Now the food I feed for the fry, and I think it's the best possible, is where you can have tabs, but I use algae wafers, and it floats down to the bottom here, and the, the babies eat on it throughout the day, and eat as much as possible. They kind of gorge themselves. If you know about the pack of dogs theory, when a bunch of fish see food, they'll eat more than no they normally would, and they grow a lot faster. So algae wafers. There's different brands of algae wafers, but that can really help your difference in raising the fry. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, you can get gems from these. What you get between the male and these females, since these are different, can be totally different than what's in the hobby. Not all the color variants have been produced. You could be the first one to produce a different variant. Now it may take several generations to get it down pat. But it is a fun experience and I think you will enjoy it. This will be a series I will continue. Ask me any questions you want to hear. Hopefully those of you who have bred fish before will now pick up at least something or feel that your ideas are the best. Either way, I hope it's benefited you in some way.
Happy African Cichlid Peacock breeding and this has been Ricky Kennerly Cichlids.